Hello my friends, how are you doing? My name is Olivio and today I want to show you three beautiful portrait effects that are very easy to do. Let's get started. So for the first one, I have selected this portrait shot, but it also works with other portraits. The first thing we want to do is to create a rectangle down here and then put this rectangle over half of the image like so or at the area that you want to effect, right? Then we are going to the fill color up here, select the color picker and select the background color that our image has like so and then again click on that area so this actually fills it with that color. Now the next step is that we go down to the text tool but we are not going to use the artistic text tool, we are going to use the frame text tool. That is very important because this gives our text more flow and variety so it's much easier to handle. So with that what you want to do is to drag out a text box over the area that you want to effect. Now we are going to fill a text in there and here are some important things to look out for. So let's first of all pull this up here and you can see this is our text. Now what you want to do is to use a font that has a large text that also has a very fat lettering so that your letters are very big and you can see the pictures below. And now we need to adapt the text to the face. So select all of the text and you can use the text font size over here to make the text big enough for your image. So this looks good. Let's maybe make it a little bit bigger like so. And you can see that the text is too far apart. You want to have the text lines as close as possible together so you see more of the portrait. So let's go Control and T on your keyboard and this will bring up our character adjustments for our font. And down here where you have these two A's on top of each other, this is the gap between the lines. So when you mouse over that and use your mouse wheel, you can see by scrolling the mouse wheel, you can adjust the distance between the lines. Now again, we have to adjust the size of the text. So this is a little bit of a playing backwards, forwards until you get all of these settings right and everything fits together. This looks almost good. Let's make the text a little bit smaller and the gap a little bit wider and that looks actually great. Good. So now that we have adjusted this, how do we make the face visible? What you want to do is to select the layer with the text frame and the rectangle together and then press Ctrl G on your keyboard to create a group like so. Open up the group, select the text frame layer and set the blend mode to erase and this will now act as a cookie cutter effect as a mask so you can look through your rectangle onto the face with the text right one thing you can see here is that now we have this bar here and you want to adjust this by using your arrow keys while having the text frame layer selected so you can for example push this to the left side and this is really up to taste how much of a bar, how much of a distance to the side of the rectangle you want to keep. Another thing that stands out here is that I have adjusted the text so that the words are running around the outside of the face but not following it exactly so it pronounces that this is actually a text shape and not just the shape of the face and the hair. Here is the last thing you want to adjust and this is that you can see even though the left side and the right side of the face are the same brightness, the right side looks darker and the text is a little bit hard to read because of all the dark gaps we have. This gives us the impression that this area is actually darker than it is. So what you want to do is use your rectangle selection tool to select that area and then go down here to adjustment layer and select brightness and contrast and you can see this has automatically created a mask for this area. Now put this adjustment layer in between your group 
with the text and the rectangle and the picture. So in between the group and the picture, right? So below the group like so, and then we make the picture a little bit darker on a little bit brighter on that side and also give it a bit more contrast, just a tiny bit like so. Push up the brightness a little bit until you feel like the left side and the right side look again as if they are the same brightness. This is the first effect. Let's go to the second effect here. And for that, we need three parts. First of all, we need a paper texture in the background. Then we need a paint texture. You can find all of these online, but I also have linked my source pictures in the video information below the video. And as a Patreon, you get my file with all the layers for learning purposes. You can see exactly what I've done. Here's the third part we need, of course, a portrait picture. Now, how are we going to do that effect? You want to use the picture with the paint on it and then right click on that and mask to below. Now, before I do that, I want to explain what we are doing here exactly. You can see that the background is completely white and then we have this paint here with this nice brush pack, uh, texture on it and this is darker than the white. This gives us a value difference and this means we can use the blend ranges to create an alpha mask from that. So look what happens here. If I right click and mask to below, nothing happens because there is no alpha. There is no difference in this layer. So Affinity Photo can't mask anything with that. But when I select now this layer with the paintbrush effect on that and click up here on the cogwheel, we have the source layer ranges. And this means that we are going to make certain parts of the image transparent. Now, when I pull down the left side, you can see that the paint area is getting visible or in this case invisible because we can now see the background through our portrait. This is of course not what we want. So we are going to go to the other side. We are going to pull this down and you can see that now the outside is showing us the paper texture while in the middle we still see the portrait. Of course we want to refine this. So create a second point and you can see when I move this up, I can really adjust this to how much I want to pick up of that paintbrush effect that has been painted onto that layer. So let's go like this so we really see our portrait as good as possible. Now here's the last step we need to do and that is simply to click on our portrait layer and set the blend mode to multiply because this will then let the paper shine through from the background and make it look as if this was painted onto the paper. That's the second effect and you can see how easy that is. Now here's the third effect and again this is super easy. For this one we actually only need two parts. So what we are going to do here is we need again a portrait and we need a paper cut effect or a whole a paper rip effect, right? So the easy thing we need to do here is to select the dark part in the middle. So go to your flood selection tool or magic wand. If you are a Photoshop user, you might know it under that name and simply click into that black area. But here is something to look out for. We need to extend this a little bit and make it a bit softer. So go to select and then to grow and shrink and grow it by three pixels. Click on apply and then go again to select, go to feather and feather it by two pixels. Click on apply. Now we are going to go to select invert pixel selection. The reason for that is because we have selected the middle part, but we want to erase the middle part. So we are inverting that. So everything else is selected, but not the middle part. And so now with this rip paper layer selected, we are going to click on the mask layer icon. This is creating a mask and you can see our portrait is in the background. Control D to deselect. Now you can stop here, but I would suggest you don't because we want to add a nice shadow. So here are two steps how I'm doing that. First of all, I'm going to select the layer with the paper rip. 
going to effects and then we are not going to inner shadows we are going to outer shadows so you can see here you can adjust this with the radius with the offset to your taste whatever you feel like is right here we can make this a little bit stronger like so and then a second step that i like to do is to create a pixel layer in between take a nice big brush and then have this set to a low opacity let's go here with let's say 15 percent hardness very low let's go to zero percent and now i'm going to brush this in a little bit stronger here maybe make this brush a little bit smaller go like so just to give me a bit more control and have the shadow a little bit more extreme as you can see here like this we can also use the opacity to reduce that effect a little bit more but now we have created that and here is a last tip before we end this tutorial and this would be to create a rectangle like so over everything then again go to the mask here right click duplicate and then pull it onto our rectangle like so and now what we are going to do is we are going to recolor the fill so change a different color for the fill like so for example let's use this color and i'm going to set this to multiply and you can see now we even have a colored paper that we can change at any point into another color so this is very versatile you can even set this up as a template for yourself to use it for a ton of different uses birthdays any kind of fun event where you need this kind of effect all right that's it for today thank you very much for watching leave a comment if you like this maybe subscribe and see you in my next tutorial. Bye!